What is up people, Fire here from AwesomeDudes.com and before you start with this video, just quickly, I wanted to tell you that you can go on my website here, AwesomeDudes.com and then you can go under download free assets and there you can download free assets. Now these are commercial free assets, they are not assets for this tutorial. The assets for this tutorial, this dark cave, you can find, link is in the description below so you can get them from that link. But these are other commercial free assets that you can use to develop your own games and you have 3D assets, 2D assets, backgrounds and whatnot and I keep adding new and new stuff. So you should definitely check this out and yeah, enjoy the video. So we got our player up and running, he's moving left and right and if I run the game if we move the player, we see that he is moving, but he is not animating, he's not walking, and he's not changing directions which he needs to face. So for example, if we move on the left side, notice what's gonna happen. So I'm moving the player left, but he is looking forward. When I move him right, well, that is okay, but when we move left, he needs to look on the other side. So now we need to create player's animations, and how can we do that? Well, we can select the player here and we can open the animator window, which is this one right here. If you do not have it, you can simply go here under window and then you can select the animation. So we need the animation, later on we will need the animator. But they are two separate things. So here we have the animation, which is the one that we need now. So you can click on it and it will open here. So since we don't have any animations on our player, we are gonna click here create. But before we do that, we are gonna go in our project and assets here. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna create a new folder. And that folder is gonna be called animations. Inside of the animations folder itself, so let me just double click on it, we are gonna create another folder, which is player animations. And we are gonna hit enter to create those animations or to create the folder actually. So if I select the player now and go in the animation tab, click on the create panel, it is gonna create a new animation, it's gonna prompt me where to save it. I'm gonna go here in this animations folder and then player animations and I'm gonna name this one idle because it's gonna be our idle animation. And now I'm gonna move our animator window or animation window up here because we need to add animations to it. So I'm gonna go in our sprites and I'm gonna drag the idle animation right here. Notice what I dragged it, so right here. Simply drag it and then hit Command and S to save it or Control S in order to save the animation. This is for the idle animation. Now we also have the walk animation. But before we go into the idle animation and before we go into the walk animation, we can, but actually that's gonna happen in the walk animation, not here in the idle, because we have here samples, which is actually frames per second. For the idle, we can leave it 60 frames per second because it's only one frame. But now when we're gonna create the other animation, you're gonna click on this right here where it says idle. So here, simply click on it right next to samples on his left side. So left side from samples, it's like a button that we can click and now we can click here create new clip. So when I click here, it's gonna prompt me to create another animation which is gonna be walk and I'm gonna hit enter. For the walk animation, we are gonna select from player one up to player seven and we're simply gonna drag and drop that right here which is gonna create all those animations. If we zoom in a little bit, now we are gonna be able to see them and you're simply gonna hit enter or excuse me, command S to save the animation. So this is it for the animation and here for the samples, we're gonna set 12 because we want 12 frames per second for this animation and I can now move the window down and notice what will happen when I run it. Notice that our player is running because his animation is running and I press the play button right here, that's why it is running. So this is player's walk and we have the idle animation also. Now we need to go into the animator panel, which is this one right here, so the animator. If you don't have it, go under window and then go into animation or excuse me, window and then you are gonna click on animator. So that animation, animator. And now, since we are in the animator panel, 
we are going to select the player and now we see his animation. So we have the idle animation and we have the walk. We want to make transitions between the two. So we want to go from idle to walk and from walk to idle back again. So I'm going to right click on the idle animation. I'm going to click make transition and I'm going to point to the walk animation. I'm going to do the same thing. Right click on the walk animation and make transition and point to the idle animation. And now we are going to make these transitions with parameters. How does that work? Well, if you see here in the animator panel, right here, we have something called layers and we have something called parameters. Well, I'm going to click on the plus button here. First, click on the parameters and you see this little plus sign like a little cross. So you're going to click on it and we're going to create a Boolean or short bool. So click on it and I'm going to name this one walk. So now that we have the parameter walk, I am going to click on the transition, which is this transition right here, transition from idle to walk animation. And now in the inspector panel for it, we see that we have these conditions, which are the conditions when we are going to run the animation. So list is currently empty, but I'm going to click here on the plus sign. And now we also have these conditions because automatically it's going to detect all of these parameters here that we have. So I'm going to put the walk animation or actually we're going to go from idle to walk animation when walk is true. And we are going to go back from walk to idle when walk is false. So this is it for setting up our animations. This is what we did here, selecting the transition and then we simply set the parameter that we want. So again, selecting the transition in the conditions, you're going to click plus. And then you can select the walk. Of course, if you have here many parameters, you can select the one that you want because that depends on your game, how you create it, so on and so forth. And we said that we are going to go from idle to walk when walk is equal to true. And we are going to go from walk to idle when walk is equal to false. So now that we set up the animation, let's go and actually implement that in our code. So I'm going to go back here and click on the player, click on his script here. Let me just move the script down by clicking on the gear icon and I'm going to click move down, which is going to move it below the animator component. And this is nothing important. It's just that I like my script to be down below every other of these components, be that box collider, animator, so on and so forth. So I'm going to double click on it and open it in Mono Develop. And now we need one more component and that is going to be a private animator. So animator, not animation, it's animator, which I am going to call anim. And we are going to get it by using get component. Why? Well, because it is attached on the player right here. You can see it right below the box collider. It is attached to the player because I moved the script down. So now uh, below my body, I'm going to say anim is equal to get component and inside of it, I am going to say animator and this is it. So going here where our player is walking in player walk keyboard, here is where we are going to implement our animator. So right here, when the player is walking, we are going to say anim dot set bool and we are going to say walk like this comma, we are going to say true and we're going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to copy the code and simply paste it here. Now, what does this mean? What did we do? Well, if you remember a moment ago in the animator panel, we set a walk parameter or a Boolean parameter named walk, which is this one right here. So if I go back in the script, this is that parameter and we set that we want to go from idle to walk when walk is true. This is what this right here means. So we're sending it to true and we're also sending it to true here because in these two if else statements, we are going to move. And that's why the walk needs to be true. So we're going from idle to walk. Let's see what will happen when we run our app. So when we run the app, if I try to move the player, he is walking and we see also when we go to the left side, he is walking, but he's not changing directions. One problem we have though, if we stop, he is still walking. Well, what's the problem here? Well, we are not returning the state back to idle. And when we are going to do that, well, here we are testing if h is greater than zero, else if h is less than zero, 
So here is where we are walking. And here we need to test else if neither of these are true. So if age is not greater than zero or not lower than zero, then we, that means that we are not walking. So we are going to copy this line of code, paste it here, and instead of walk true, we are going to say walk false, which is going to make our player's animation go back from walk to idle because we set it here to be false. If I run the project, now we are going to see that our player is going to stop when we, well, stop moving. Notice now I'm going to stop moving and the player stopped moving. We see his animation. But one more problem that we have though is that he is not changing the direction. So if we go left, he is still facing right. So we need to fix that. And how we are going to fix it? Well, I'm going to show you right now. If I select the player, in his transform, we have something called scale. If I notice what's going to happen if I set the scale x to negative 1, currently it is at 1. Notice the player. Take a look at the player closely. If I set it to be negative, bam, he is facing the left side. If I set it to positive, he is facing the right side. So what we are going to do here, well, we are going to go simply in our code and right here below or above when we set the set anim bool walk to true, we are going to type here vector3 called temp, which is equal to transform that position. This means that we have created a vector3 variable named it temp, which is equal to transform that position. What does this mean? Well, we are accessing here the transform. If I select the player, notice his transform property on top. So we are accessing the transform and we're accessing his position, but actually we need to access local scale. So excuse me for this one, because we need to change the scale, not the position. So transform that local scale is actually this right here. So transform is this component and below is his scale that I've just changed to negative one. And now we are simply going to change it to negative one. So we are going to say here temp that X is equal to one because we are moving to the right side. And simply now we are going to say transform that Local scale, local scale is equal to temp. This means that we took the local scale from the transform, changed the X value, and then returned it back to transform local scale. We're going to do the same thing here below, but here instead of one, it is going to be equal to negative one. Why? Well, because here we are going to the left side. And now if I go back into Unity and if I run the game, notice the player. Let me just zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to scale. Can I? Okay, I can do it like this, but actually no, this is not good. So I'm going to move it back. So notice now the player, when I move right, he's facing right. But when I move left, he is facing left. This is what we wanted to achieve. Notice our player is movable and our player is awesome. So he looks awesome, man. I don't know about you, but I enjoy creating these things like this, okay? So we could, let me just go here. We could move his uh, collider. Yeah, we could move his collider a little bit up because, well, we saw where his feet are. His feet need to be on the ground. So I'm gonna move it up a little bit. So collider, instead of 2.6, let's say 2.6. Five, no, 2.1. Yeah, 2.1, 2.21 on the Y axis for his, actually this is the size. Yeah, this is the size of his collider, okay? So size of the box collider 2D on the Y axis is 2.21. If I run the game now, we are gonna see our player on the ground, which is cool. And he is moving left and right. This is awesome. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to make our player jump. So we see you or I will see you guys in the next video when we are going to make our player jump. Take care.